You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, affirmed the importance of journalism to enrich people's lives with knowledge and awareness. His Royal Highness stated that the press, with its influence on directing public opinion, has a great responsibility in stimulating energies in creating the present and the future. His Royal Highness reaffirmed that the press is a supportive element for all issues of society for its exceptional role of adopting visions that keep pace with the times and meeting its requirements. He stressed that the world under the current circumstances with the spread of the coronavirus pandemic is in dire need of a sense of responsibility that spreads hope and reassurance. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister hailed the role of journalists, media figures and writers in the Kingdom of Bahrain in particular and in the world in general in raising awareness and supporting the efforts of the medical and nursing cadres in combating the pandemic, which reflects the value and impact of the noble mission of the profession of journalism. His Royal Highness said that the freedoms that the Bahraini journalism's in journalists enjoy is due to the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, who is keen on promoting and encouraging freedom of the press and media in a manner that supports the development march that Bahrain is witnessing under the leadership of His Majesty the King. In a message, His Royal Highness addressed to the world on the occasion of the World Press Freedom Day, which falls next Sunday under the slogan, The Press Without Fear or Favor. He affirmed that this year's celebration is gaining special importance in light of the current conditions that were created by the corona pandemic, which presented great challenges at the global level. His Royal Highness expressed Bahrain's pride in its journalistic and media cadres, which has managed for decades to establish foundations of pure Bahraini journalist schools that reflect the authentic Bahraini identity and supports the cohesion of the society and the national unity. His Royal Highness also praised the remarkable performance of Bahraini journalists and writers in defending the country's causes and confronting all who seek to undermine the security and stability of the country. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, underscored the government's keenness to respond to all issues raised by the press concerning the country and its citizens. His Royal Highness expressed appreciation for the outstanding contribution made by the Bahraini Journalists Association and its efforts in enhancing the press and preserving the rights of journalists. The Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, Dr. Mustafa Sayed, has revealed that a special committee to coordinate the efforts of the national campaign Fina Khair has been formed. The panel comprises representatives from the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Finance and National Economy, the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Labor and Social Development, the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, the Ministry of Health and the Labor Market Regulatory Authority. Dr. Sayed pointed out that the Fina Khair campaign Campaign, which was launched to support the national efforts to combat the novel coronavirus COVID-19 led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. It is also in line with the directives of His Majesty the King's Representative for Huma Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Board of Trustees Chairman of the RHF, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, has presented a distinguished example of giving and social cohesion for the sake of the nation and in order to defeat the virus and ensure the safety and health of everyone. RHF Secretary General explained that the disbursement of the amounts donated to Fina Khair campaign includes the distribution of iftar meals on a daily basis, presenting purchasing coupons, supporting productive families through the purchase of masks and handmade face masks in addition to supporting the efforts of the General Directorate of the Civil Defense regarding sterilization operations as well as the provision of computers for needy families. The spokesperson for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Health, Dr. Mohammed Al Abdul Ali, announced that 1,344 new cases of coronavirus have been registered, which takes a total tally to over 24,000 in the country. Dr. Al Abdul Ali said during a press conference that the total number of cases that have been successfully treated inside the kingdom now exceeded 3,500. He affirmed the importance of taking all necessary precautions, such as wearing masks to cover one's nose and mouth to mitigate the spread of the outbreak of the virus. He added that the new cases include people of all ages and underlined that the virus can still spread further. A United Arab Emirates Research Institute has developed a coronavirus treatment using stem cells, which could be a game changer in the global fight against the outbreak. A government official announced that the Abu Dhabi Stem Cell Center has developed a treatment method that regenerates lung cells and prevents the immune system from overreacting. The treatment involves the extraction of stem cells from a patient's own blood and reintroducing them into the lungs via inhalation of a mist. The treatment has successfully undergone an initial phase of clinical trials with no harmful side effects on 73 patients, making full recovery. 
Over to Kuwait, where the country has recorded three new coronavirus fatalities over the past 24 hours and 242 new cases, raising the total to 4,619. The health ministry announced today that the additional 101 people have recovered in the kingdom. The death toll reached 33, while the number of recoveries is now 1,703. The ministry spokesperson said 66 patients were in intensive care and 30 of them are in a critical condition. Oman has seen a drop in its daily increase with the health ministry recording only 36 new coronavirus cases over the past 24 hours compared to 99 the day before. The Sultanate has maintained its low death toll at 11 out of a total of 2,483 cases. Meanwhile, 750 people have recovered so far, according to the health ministry. Authorities continue to urge people to adhere to preventative measures such as social distancing and staying at home to slow the spread of the virus. The Sultanate announced its first two cases of COVID-19 on February the 24th to Armani women who had caught the virus in Iran. Iran's death toll from the new coronavirus increased by 65 in the past 24 hours to 6,156 today, according to the health ministry. The total number of diagnosed cases in Iran, one of the hardest hit Middle Eastern countries, has reached 96,448, according to the health ministry spokesman, adding that 2,787 were in a critical condition. Meanwhile, Iranian officials began allowing economic activities to resume nationwide while urging citizens to maintain social distancing and other health precautions. The lockdown has further weakened an economy and recession since 2018 when the United States began toughening sanctions aimed at pressuring Iran to end perceived malign behaviors. Yemen reported the first case of the novel coronavirus in a third province late yesterday, raising the number of diagnosed infections to seven, with two deaths in one of the world's most vulnerable countries. The United Nations says it fears the virus could be spreading undetected in the country, where a five-year war has shattered health systems and left millions acutely malnourished. Yemen recorded its first case of COVID-19 in southern Hadramaut province on April the 10th. On Wednesday, it announced five infections in Aden with two deaths. The World Health Organization has said it fears the worst about the COVID-19 impact in Yemen, as its population has some of the lowest levels of immunity and most acute vulnerability to disease compared with other nations. Russia today reported its largest increase in coronavirus cases, with a new infection rising by nearly 10,000 in a single day. New infections jumped by 9,623 to 124,054 cases. The official fatality rate is low in comparison to countries like Italy, Spain and the United States, however. 57 people died over the past 24 hours, bringing the total death toll to 1,222. Moscow's mayor said the Russian capital, which has emerged as the epicenter of the contagion, was not yet past the peak of the outbreak. Moscow recorded 5,358 new cases, bringing the capital's total tally to 62,658. Over 1.5 million cases of coronavirus have been recorded in, in Europe, just under half the worldwide total according to an AFP tally today, with at least 1,506,853 and 853 infections, including 140,260 deaths. Europe is the hardest hit continent. Across the world, 3 million 350 and 224 cases and 238,334 deaths have been recorded. Spain, Italy, Britain, France and Germany are the five European countries with official tolls over 150,000. The tallies, using data collected by AFP from nationwide authorities and information from the World Health Organization, probably reflect only a fraction of the actual number of infections. Many countries are testing only the most serious cases. The Yemeni National Army announced that it has cleared a number of positions along the Ghania front in the north of the Baida province following violent battles with the Iran-backed Houthi militia. This comes at a time when the Yemeni National Army foiled another Houthi attack in Jauf, which represents yet another violation of the coalition ceasefire initiative, with the Houthi militia continuing to supply their members with weapons and other military equipment in various areas. The military's press official said that the militia carried out attacks against Yemeni army positions as well as civilians in various towns and villages in Beba. Some 3,000 protesters on bicycles staged a protest against Slovenia's center-right government despite gatherings being banned amid a lockdown against a new coronavirus. The protest in Loboljana was held for a second week in a row over claims of political interference in the procurement of protective gear and ventilators during the outbreak of the coronavirus. Wearing face masks, the protesters passed through the center of the city before stopping or riding in circles by the government and parliament buildings. Slovenian anti-corruption authorities have launched an investigation into the allegation. Government officials have denied any wrongdoing. 
The United States imposed sanctions on TAFE Mining Services, LLC, and its owner over accusations he helped support Iran's elite Quds force, including its efforts to smuggle shipments from Ye Iran to Yemen. The U.S. Treasury Department said in a statement that Iranian and Iraqi national Amir Dianat has supported Quds force smuggling operations for years, including efforts aimed at the shipment of weapons, including missiles. In addition to the Treasury Department's blacklisting of Dianat, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Columbia filed criminal charges against him and one of his business associates for violations of sanctions and money laundering laws. The sanctions freeze any U.S.-held assets of Dianat or type mining services and generally bar Americans from dealing with them. President Donald Trump depicted an optimistic picture of the future of the U.S. economy despite the coronavirus pandemic sending the U.S. economy into the fastest collapse since the Great Depression, with output reported shrinking rapidly. U.S. officials estimate the gross domestic product shrank at an annual rate of 4.8 percent in the last quarter, the sharpest quarterly drop since the Great Recession of 2008, and estimates that the GDP will plunge at a 40 percent annual rate during the current quarter. New jobless claims show an estimated 30 million Americans out of work. Well, I think we're going to have a great third quarter. It's going to be a transition. So when I say great, I think the transition is going to be really terrific. And we're going to take it into the fourth. And I think we're going to have potentially a great fourth quarter. There's tremendous pent-up demand. I don't know if Kevin said that or Larry Kudlow, uh, but uh, they're telling they see it. But I feel it. I feel it. I think sometimes what I feel is better than what I think, unfortunately or fortunately, Phil. But I tell you what, I feel it. And I will say that I think next year is going to be a, a spectacular year in terms of growth, in terms of bringing our country back. I think we're going to have a really good year. We want to be where we were. And I think we can actually surpass where we were. And we were the strongest anywhere in the world. We were the best that we ever were, but we were the strongest anywhere in the world. But uh, I view what we have now as obviously a period of uh, here we are. This, it is what it is. We just got hit by a vicious virus. Virgin Galactic spaceship VSS Unity landed in the New Mexico desert, marking its first glide flight from Spaceport America as the company moves towards commercial operations. After years of development and testing at Mojave Air and Spaceport in California, Virgin Galactic is close to starting actual operations at its futuristic terminal and hangar in southern New Mexico. The company has not set a date for the first commercial flights, but has said it anticipates doing so in 2020. A small number of test flights are needed before the Virgin Galactic can take paying customers on supersonic thrill rides to the lower reaches of space to experience a few minutes of weightlessness and a view of the Earth below. The suborbital flights will reach an altitude of at least 80.5 kilometers before the spaceship glides to a landing. More than 600 customers from around the world have put down deposits for flights and about 8,000 reservations of interest have been made since the successful test flight into space in December of 2018.